Hello everyone. In this video, I will demonstrate how to use multi-group analysis. So this is the model we have been working on. And we have one uh, categorical variable called marital status, which has two values, one being not married and two being married. And what we want to really do is we want to see whether this uh, structural relationship uh, changes um, with the marital status. And for that we have to uh, perform multi-group analysis. So uh, again, for the details on the model, uh, I will request viewers to look at my earlier videos uh, in this series. Uh, in this case, we're just going to focus on multi-group analysis using Smart PLS. So this is the uh, model we've been working on, and I have uh, not the one. I have. Uh, Smart PLS model. This is the model we've been working on. I'm just going to copy this one, duplicate this one so that I don't mess around the original model. Uh, I'm going to call it four. And um, what we need to do here, since we are focusing on multi group analysis, I'm going to take out moderating effect uh, stress. If I delete stress, that should delete that thing. So this is the model we have. And I want to perform multi-group analysis based on uh, gender, uh, um, marital status, not gender, marital status. So you, this is the data set we have. So the first thing we have to do is create a group, or uh, create groups. Um, uh, like we have to sort of partition, partition the data into two groups, uh, married and non-married. For that, we have to go to the data set, um, generate data groups and Let's give it a name called uh, marital status. Okay. Okay. So that's what we have here. And uh, we're going to select the item uh, called marital status. Okay. It has two uh, unique values. So it's going to create two groups. We're going to say, okay, here. And uh, one more thing I wanted to point out, let it be completed here. So we have two groups here. Uh, so this you can edit the names. It uh, doesn't sound like a good name. One, so we have, let's say, uh, one being not married, right? So I'm gonna edit this one. I'm going to say, uh, name it as not married. Okay. Okay. So uh, I'm going to say, okay, here. And I'm going to edit this one as well. I'm going to call this as married. So we have two groups. So uh, married and not married another thing i wanted to point out here is uh, minimum cases so so to create a group uh, this is assuming that you have to have at least 10 uh, observation in that group otherwise it's not going to create the group and you can you know set the values that you want 100 or 1000 whatever you want but that's something you have to keep in mind uh, another thing i wanted to tell you that sometimes you have uh, not categorical variable but you have a continuous variable let's say you have years of experience okay and you want to create uh, uh, two groups out of it let's say you know uh, low uh, low experience and high experience so you can do that here you can click on add data group here and you, you can say you know high experience and you know select particular i don't have high experience here but let's say you know select any particular variable like this one and i'm gonna say if it is uh, less than lower than equal to uh, you know let's say 10 years of experience uh, i mean uh, since we are doing the higher experience so we're gonna say uh, higher than 10 years of experience is gonna create one group you're gonna say okay here and then you're gonna say another one you're gonna create another one call low experience and this time you can say is lower than uh, 10 uh, because uh, if you do that is gonna 10 will be omitted 10 won't be in any of the groups so we're gonna say maybe 11 so uh, anything less than equal to 10 will be low experience more than 10 
will be high experience and you're going to create that group here so you can do that once you do that uh, you can obviously add more restrictions you can add you can create a group by you know based on multiple criterion based on multiple you know multiple variables okay you can do that here that's something you have to keep in mind okay so lower than let's say 11 something like that so you can add more terms and things like that just to let you know that you have flexibility to create the variables uh, or the groups based on continuous variables as well or based on complex conditions so something that you need to keep in mind because you might need this when you're doing any kind of analysis in PLSSCM so coming back to this one we have two groups uh, very uneven group number of observations and when the number of observations are very uneven uh, PLS MGA tends to work better uh, so we're gonna use that so we have created the groups here I'll go back to my model here I'm gonna close this one that's the model we have so I'm gonna go ahead and click on PLS algorithm here to get my weights here since we are using a uh, second order construct here so factor wing scheme I'm gonna use missing value is gonna be case-wise deletion uh, please listen to my earlier videos why we are using case-wise deletion in this case uh, data groups now I'm gonna select all of them what it's gonna do is gonna create three separate model one is the overall model uh, is gonna not like no complete is gonna use complete data set and second model is gonna be for just the married people and third model is just gonna be not married people so you're gonna see three uh, models there so let's hit the start here So if you go here, uh, this is the complete model that me, that includes the complete data set and you can switch it around. Let's say if you want to see just uh, the model just for the married people, click on this one. See the specifically this one, satisfaction to commitment for married people, uh, the coefficient value is 0.562. But if you go to non-married people, it bumps up to 0 .0, 0 0.605. So there is a difference and we want to find out that whether that difference is significant likewise here not married people commitment to retention is 0 0.52 then you go to married uh, it goes on to 0 0.474 so there is a difference there as well so we want to know whether that difference is significant so here we are comparing uh, not married people group greater than married people group so we have seen that there is a difference in the coefficient and that's what we are gonna figure it out so for that we have to run MGA here so we're gonna do a multi-group analysis here we the way you're gonna select here uh, is gonna determine what you are doing here uh, as I said uh, So for that we have to run MGA. So we're gonna go to MGA here, and we let's So for that we are going to run NGA here so we're gonna click on uh, multi-group analysis here and you see uh, this has already been selected I'm gonna select this one so you're gonna see a uh, group A and group B so one thing you have to keep in mind that MGA is non parametric and it's one tail test so it's always compare group A greater than equal to group B that's a comparison is making so you have to be very careful what you want to choose here so if you want to compare uh, let's say not married people greater than married people group 
So that's how you're gonna select it. If you want the other way around, you can do the married people group A is greater than not married people group B. So that's something you have to keep in mind. So in our case, we have seen that not married people coefficients are more. So let's do not married versus married here. And partially square, we're just gonna do 300 here. Factor uh, playing scheme because we have second order construct here. Bootstrapping is gonna retain the default settings here. Uh, we are using very small subsample size of 200. Uh, in, each, in the final model, you should do 5,000 subsamples, but here we just gonna do 200 in the interest of time. Missing value is gonna be case wise deletion. Uh, and please uh, watch my other videos why we are selecting case wise deletion in this case. Uh, and with that, I'm gonna say start here. So this is the result window we got. Uh, we're gonna spend some time here. Uh, so this is telling me the coefficient of, let's say married people. Uh, and this is not married people. Uh, so that's their coefficient. And these coefficients, if you see here, they're all significant in the respective model, but we are interested more um, in whether the difference between those coefficients are significant or not. That's that's uh, that's the thing. And again, you can uh, you should be able to see that. So, for example, this is for married, right? Satisfaction to retention is a point two two four. So, should it be there? Satisfaction to let's say this one. Okay. Satisfaction to retention. 0.224 that's what we are seeing there right so and while we are here just to confirm not married is 0 0.214 0 0.214 here so this showing you the you know coefficients for respective model but we want to see the difference between the two whether those are significant or not so uh, confidence interval just going to tell you the confidence interval for each coefficients in respective model, married and not married. We are more interested in PLS MGA. This is again non-parametric and uh, and it uses one tailed test. So so again, we are comparing not married versus married. Means we, the hypothesis here is a not married group are greater than or is greater than or equal to married group coefficients okay we are talking about the coefficients here so anything less than 0 0.05 is gonna sort of uh, show you the significant difference uh, we have higher order model here so we're just gonna worried about uh, you know uh, this three uh, last three rows here customer commitment to retention satisfaction to commitment and satisfaction to retention so as you see that uh, Commitment to retention is significant at 0 0.05, and uh, satisfaction to commitment, commitment to retention is significant, and satisfaction to commitment is also significant at 0 0.017 because they are less than 0 0.05. We are not going to worry about this one because this is a higher order construct here. Uh, satisfaction to retention is not significant at 0 0.05. So, here what it means, it means that uh, the coefficient of the people who are not married. Uh, is stronger, uh, coefficients are stronger for commitment to retention relationship and for satisfaction to the commitment relationship compared to the people who are married. So so looks like the people who are not married, the people who are single tend to be um, more committed if they are more satisfied and which in, in case uh, might lead to higher retention compared to the people who are married. And 
we need to dig it in uh, for the reasons why this could be the case. It could be because families tend to have more members in the family because of which they might have some other unknown issues, which the single people don't have it. Probably that's the thing, but good to know, right? So that's a PLS MG, it's non-parametric and uh, one tail test, but it also gives you the parametric test here. So I'm gonna click on the parametric test. Now this parametric test is very much like, a, it's a t-test, basically two sample t-test, okay? So it assumes uh, there is a big assumption here that the, the variances are among the groups, the two groups, not married and married, um, they, the variances is equal, okay? The variances, uh, not, uh, um, the variances are not equal, then you cannot use, should not be using parametric test. For that, you know, if you are interested whether the variances are equal um, uh, across different groups, what you need to do here is, I will here, go here, calculate, and you can run the permutation. We're not gonna do it here. If the people who are interested probably, you know, explore more this option. Our focus is on mainly uh, MGA here, but that, if you see the parametric test, it does reinforce what we found in the non-parametric test of MGA, right? So here, commitment to retention is significant. Satisfaction commitment is significant at 0.1 level, um, may not be 0 0.05 level, but 0.1 level, and it's very close to 0 0.05. And it also gives you a Welch uh, Sutter weight test. And now this test, uh, is a t-test, but it doesn't assume equal variances uh, um, across the groups. So that's something to keep in mind. So if you fail the assumptions of equal variances uh, across different groups, you have to use Welch Setter weight test. And it's, it's giving you very similar result that what we got in PLS and GA. So it's, these two are significant here uh, when the group variances are not equal, uh, equal, I mean, the, when the group variances are equal, still we are getting the same result. And if you use non-parametric MGA, one tail test, still we are getting the same result. So, uh, you know, it, in, in conclusion, you know, we can simply rely on PLS MGA because it's non-parametric and it's very conservative and it gives good results. So, uh, so that's pretty much it. I hope I'm not missing anything here. So, so basically what you're going to write, you're going to write exactly what I said a couple of minutes ago. The strength of the relationship is higher for people who are not married when it comes to satisfaction to commitment and commitment to retention compared to the people who are married. So that's a good conclusion. So this is how you perform multi-group analysis. Uh, thank you very much for listening.